check one 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 hello hello nothing Happy Resurrection Sunday, Regeneration Nashville. Would you stand with us today? God bless you all. For all of our visitors that's here with us, we are so happy that you joined us on Resurrection Sunday. And as I always say, if you do not have a church family, we hope that you feel at home with us here today at Regeneration. For our online visitors and members, thank you for joining us so faithfully every Sunday. Psalm 1 and 3 said, They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and all that they do, they prosper. If you came in here today and the enemy has lied to you and deceived you into believing that your purpose has been buried, the deceiver himself has deceived himself. For what he did not take into consideration is that you were crucified with Christ. No longer you who live, but Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you take that and you remind yourself that the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead courses through your very veins. You lay your hands on yourself today and you say purpose, come alive in the name of Jesus. Hope, come alive in Jesus' name. Dreams, resurrect in Jesus' name. You may be living in a Friday season, but Resurrection Sunday is coming to your life in Jesus' name. I tell you right now, as the song says, there's no grave going to hold your body down. If he walked out of that grave, you're walking too. You haven't been buried. You've been planted for this season. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise for the finished work of Calvary. That God, you, came, you overcame death, hell, and the grave. That we might be overcomers in this life. And we combine 
create a spirit of defeatism that has attached itself to this nation. And we declare that we're coming out of these grave clothes today, a victorious people. There's no grave going to hold us down. There's an army rising up in this land, and we are coming out of the ashes. Holy Spirit, move in this place over every minister and every heart in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for a resurrected king.
you, Jesus. Across this building, front to back, side to side. We just lift your hands in his presence. Just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way. You made a way across the great divide. Left behind.
bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel them in this place today, church. Thank you, Jesus. We rest in you today. Thank you, Lord.
feel the presence of the Lord in this place? Would you lift your hands for a moment? Come on and let the day just fall away. And we're in his presence. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Do what only you can do, Lord. Oh, do what only you can do, Lord. Oh, we call upon the name of Jesus. We call upon the name of Jesus. Come on, just press in for a minute. afternoon we have here today if you have your communion when you came in you should have received this so we're going to take a moment right now I don't know about you but aren't you thrilled that we're living on this side of the resurrection we celebrated Friday but today we're celebrating the life that conquered death hell and the grave we celebrate him today so if you will just hold that so father we lift up these elements lord that represents the body and the blood of your son we're thankful today that we are healed we're whole we're forgiven and Lord, we've been made accepted in the beloved, into your family. So we celebrate today by receiving these elements in the name of your son. Would you get the bread? So receive it. Can you say praise the Lord? Come, come on. Can, come on. Thank you right now, Lord, for what you're doing, what you've done. Now open the cup and we receive the juice. Scripture says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. With this cup, I want us to declare, I want you to declare this with me that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. In Jesus' name, receive the cup. Now, can we lift our voice and give him praise and thank him that the kingdom of God is now. Man, powerful. You can be seated for just a moment. I was, uh, I was reading this week and I came across an article and uh, it was on Canada and it was talking about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And he was just kind of giving, uh, speaking, speaking words over the country of what he sees, he sees coming up, what he sees in the future. And they quoted him as saying, the days of abundance are over. And as soon as I read that, uh, his proclamation over Canada, I couldn't shake it. And it, it stuck with me all week because I felt like the Lord said, choose 
choose whose report that you will believe. And so he says the days of abundance are over, but to the people of God, the Lord is saying the best is yet ahead. I have stored up the former and the latter rains together to pour out. God has been speaking to us from this stage and many others, and he's saying, expand your storehouses, open your arms to receive, make room in your homes for your prodigals, because the best days, the most joyous days, days of laughter and days of blessing are ahead of you and what I have in store for you. So choose what you will believe. First Samuel chapter two, verse eight, it says, he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the garbage pile. He sees them with noblemen and gives them a throne of honor. So I don't care where you're at today. I don't care what your circumstances look like. We serve a risen king who they said was dead, but he is alive and well, and he can do great and mighty things on your behalf, amen? I was praying the other night and the Lord began to, to speak to me and I could see that a great shaking was, was hitting the land and it's like everywhere I looked, I could just see a, just this violent shaking of the land. And as I looked out on the land and it was shaking, I could see all of, all of these enemies and they were coming out from under rocks and from, from hidden and dark places. And the Lord said, I had to shake the land to bring them out. And as the enemy was coming out, he was clothed in such arrogance. He just strutted and he would speak his evil plans with his just great boldness and just strutting through the land. And the Lord said, it's okay, don't be worried by what they say. Don't focus so much on what they're saying. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I had to draw them out so I could destroy them. And he said, the very words that the enemy speaks will be the noose on which he hangs, amen? And so I just want to encourage you today, whatever your circumstances may be, our best days are ahead of us. Blessing is ahead of us. He is not dead, but he is risen and he sits on the throne. And so our days of abundance are ahead of us. Amen. If you want to stand to your feet, we'll say our offering declaration uh, together. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I choose to sow cheerfully and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me me and overtaking me because God loves to see me prosper. I'm believing him for advancements, God ideas, blessings and increases, financial freedom and breakthroughs. Amen. Ushers, you may serve the people. Hello, Regeneration Nashville. How's everybody doing? Somebody yelled something. What'd you say? Oh, I, I love you too. Uh, if no one's told you they love you today, I want to be the first. I love you and nobody beat me to it today. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So happy that y'all are here. We have visitors from all over the country. I just want to take a moment to welcome our visitors and our online uh, family today. We love you so much. Uh, first of all, I, I, I met some folks, I want to say from Alabama. Where is Alabama? Stand and let us welcome you. God bless you. Please stand, yes. I don't think I met you. I, I said I did, but I'm honored that you're here. God bless you. We welcome you to Regeneration Nashville. California, where is California? God bless you. This lady right here, did you fly in yesterday or today? Yesterday. She flew in yesterday, go home tomorrow for today's service. We honor you. We welcome you. God bless you. Uh, Sacramento area, just north of Sacramento. We're honored to have you. Colorado, where's Colorado? Just kidding. So, sorry? They meant Iowa? Okay, I think I have Iowa down. You can stand twice. How's that? 
Iowa and Colorado, stand up in one person. Yeah, we're honored to have you. God bless you so much. And uh, you've been following my husband's ministry for many years, and we're just honored uh, to have you here today. God bless you. Indiana, where is Indiana? These friends from Indiana, stand up. I want to say, I want to show you something. Do you remember me telling you about the man who came on New Year's Eve and God healed his knee, knee and then he was watching online and God completed the miracle? This is the brother right here. God bless you. Welcome to Regeneration Nashville. Honored to have you. Uh, so Kentucky, where is Kentucky? Kentucky, yes, please stand. Louisville, Kentucky. Honored to have you from Brother Bob Rogers Church. We honor you. Thank you for being with us. Minnesota. Stand, Minnesota. We are so glad you're here. God bless you. I really think Minnesota people just come down here just so they can hear me say that. I really do. Where is North Carolina? We have North Carolina here. God bless you. Honored to have you. Amen. Uh, South Carolina, sir. Stand, South Carolina. He's from, he told me before church, he's from so many different states, he didn't know which one to say. So you could stand two or three times too if you want to, brother. Uh, so believe it or not, they have Tennessee circled. Anybody from Tennessee? <laughs> what is it? The voices are from, from, from Cleveland, Tennessee. We're honored to have you. God bless you. So this is fun. We have someone from Jamaica today. Where is Jamaica? God bless you, sir. Honored to have you. Amen. Did, did I miss a state? Is there anybody here from a different? Washington. Stand, Washington. Let us honor you. Handsome young man there. God bless you. Honored to have you. Anybody else? Nobody else. Okay, well, we're, we're just glad everybody's here, and I just want to wish you, uh, some people say Easter, it was Easter my whole life, but now that seems incorrect, so Resurrection Day, Passover, we're just honored that you are here, and we, we are so blessed to be able to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ on this day with you, so honored to have you here. I also want to share, I'll talk next week a little bit more about fasting uh, because I want to give the voices of Lee plenty of time, but we have our corporate prayer and fasting uh, April the 4th and 5th. Uh, and on the 6th, uh, okay, the 4th and the 5th will be the warehouse location. Uh, in the evenings, we will be praying together uh, from 5 to 6, the, uh, 5 to 6.30, the doors will be open and we'll be praying together as a church family. And this is in preparation. This church uh, prays and fasts corporately as a family. Uh, every quarter we fast three days and so uh, it just so happens this falls right before our fall conference and I'm believing for signs and wonders and miracles in our fall conference and so uh, we have brother Jensen Franklin Dr. Hans Hess, we have Brother Samuel Rodriguez, Brother Tony Suarez, and our own Pastor Kent Christmas will be ministering at our Fresh Fire Conference. And look, I'm so happy. I'm so excited about it. I just literally cannot wait. If you have not registered for your seat, go ahead and do that now because uh, the room is filling up. We just have a few seats left. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. But uh, our Fresh Fire Conference is April the 11th through the 14th. And so if you brought your Bibles, before we, uh, before we ask Voices of Lee uh, to come and minister, I wonder if you would just stand with me for a moment. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 28. I think this is very important for us as a church family, for this to be declared. Um, um, Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to start at verse 5. And you can read this aloud with me. I think they're going to put it up on the uh, overhead. Verse 5, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. 
he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. Now, uh, this is, I just want to declare this. Today, I want us to give a shout that will resound all the way to the White House. Today is transformation visibility today. There will be visible transformation by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I want somebody to give Jesus Christ the greatest shout of the day. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 It is transformation day in the Holy Ghost. Give God a shout of praise. He is risen. He is risen. Come on. Press in. Press in. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. We speak a declaration over the United States of America that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, you're going to have to forgive me for getting just a little bit radical. I can't help it. I love my nation, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is Lord of the United States of America. Why don't you just stay standing, and let's welcome Danny Murray and the Voices of Lee. Give the Lord a shout.
Thank you, Lord, for your peace that we can't understand. Hallelujah. Wow. Oh, I told you all this was great. I told you he's going to love it. Thank you, Pastor Candy. Thank you all for allowing us to be here. And we have so many friends. And uh, this is my pretty wife right here. She is the provost and vice president at Lee University. You'll like me better when you see her. And Rick and Debbie from Cal, we're so glad y'all finally made it out. I hope you brought the flag with you. Um, and so many friends. And, to, you know, Debbie and I have four kids and 11 grandbabies. I know I don't look that old. Thank you, Sonia, for saying that. But uh, we, uh, t tonight, today, we've not, it never been more proud than we were of two of our kids, Jasmine and Chris Phillips, that are alums of Voices. Yeah. We love you guys. Thank you. Come over and give me a hug. My Lord. Don't you love this youngin? Love you. Where's Chris P? Chris Chris playing the piano. We love you so much, buddy. We don't have time to talk, but we got one more song we want to do for you. Thank you. This just means so much to us. You know, you're the kind of people I want these folks around. You know? You're not scared of nothing. You're not scared of the government and you're not scared of the devil. Come on. Why? Because our God is faithful, amen? Come on, is he faithful? Has he been faithful to you? Hallelujah. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, if he's been good to you, lift up holy hands and thank him. Look into his face. Tell him you love him.
says that God took him that was no sin and made him sin so that we could become righteousness in God. And I'm thankful this morning for a tomb that is empty and a God that cared so much about me that he would come and find me where I was and wrap me in his arms and call me his own. I thank him because I love him and he's been that good to me. Today I'm thankful that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in me that I've been, I've been overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And now I can say that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus because he loves me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after Hallelujah. Well, if that don't fill your tank, nothing will. Praise God. I, we definitely want them back. Hallelujah. It's just such an encouragement to see uh, young men and women that have not sold out to the enemy but are on fire for God, that the world did not get their voice, but God is using it for his own glory. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Amen. Danny, thank you so much for all the years that you poured into our young people and the word of the Lord and uh, just the song of God that's gone forth. Over the last year, I have prayed a verse over and over such a presence of God here today. Hallelujah. There is a, there is a depth. I'm, I'm telling you what I see in the spirit. God has lifted the lid off because he wants to pour in divine revelation into our spirits. And the Bible says that we are transformed by how the renewing of the way we think. And God is brought this group of men and women together from all over the United States. So many of you have moved here specifically, not for a job, but for this church. God has brought us together to be in a collective group of men and women who are operating in the mind of Christ, to think like Christ thinks, but that cannot be done without revelation. Now unto the God of glory and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may he fill me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of my understanding might be opened, that I would know, hallelujah, what is the hope of glory, the exceeding greatness of his power that worketh in us who believe according to the power that he raised up Christ from the dead. That, hallelujah, that God would fill us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom is the ability to apply the revelation that God gives you in the Spirit. And so there are some things that God will begin to reveal because it is necessary for you to understand it for where you are going. There are, there are different places in God that if you get there, but you don't have the understanding of how to operate in that arena, then you fail your purpose. So we must, as a people of God, begin to have more understanding and revelation of the things of the Lord. And so uh, I preached to you last week on the kingdom of God. We're going to do another, another message on that. I... I I am in a vein of revelation for me personally. And uh, God is answering some questions for me on how to make this book work. I've been preaching in June for 53 years. 
And I've had the Holy Ghost for God knows how long. Nine, I was nine when I got it. I'm going to be 70 in June. And so all I know is the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, it's almost embarrassing that it has taken this long to be able to grasp some of the principles and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. There is a gully wash of the Spirit of the Lord that is flowing today. Hallelujah. I see a cleansing power of the Spirit of the Lord in this room. God said that there are streams that your feet are in right now and that God is beginning to wash your feet in the Spirit of the Lord and there's a cleansing taking place by the power of God. God is opening us up for the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And so the, I'm going to read one verse I'm not sure how I'm, I'm going to get through all of this because I feel pulled in so many directions. Um, in Luke chapter 16, and uh, we're going to read one verse. Luke chapter 16, verse 16 says, The law and the prophets were until John. God is not discrediting them. He is just dating them. He said, the law and the prophets were unto John. But since John the Baptist, since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man is pressing into it. One verse says that after John, the kingdom of God permitteth violence, and the violent or the strong are pressing in or they're getting it by force. When John began to preach about Jesus, he began to tell them that there was a king coming that would give them equality. They were so excited that men and women were becoming almost violent in the spirit realm, trying to get a hold of the kingdom of God. You could be seated so the Lord begins to declare here, even before crucifixion, even before resurrection, God was saying this. He said, now the kingdom of God is being preached. There is no message that is greater in the Bible than the kingdom of God. It is not listed in the Old Testament. Why? Because the law and the prophets were only testifying of something that was yet to come. It was not an actuality. They were prophesying that there's a day coming when a king is going to show up and he will have a kingdom in the earth. And so... He said, until that time, he said, they have been releasing this word. But he said, I'm telling you that today the kingdom of God is at hand. It has now showed up. It's sad, but most Christians are in the church, but they're not in the kingdom most Christians are saved, but they don't rule and reign. You can go to heaven and not be in the kingdom. The kingdom message is not about getting into heaven. It's about living a life, hallelujah, of victory in the earth and advancing the kingdom of the Lord. No wonder when they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. My God, I feel the anointing of the Lord today. Hallelujah in this place. There is a deposit of the spirit of the Lord. There's a cloud of glory beginning to flow in this sanctuary by the anointing of the Lord. Holy Ghost, open our minds up right now. Open our spirits up to be able to get a hold of the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. God wants to elevate you. God wants you to stand on the rock of ages and look your enemy in the eye and declare greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You've got something in you that is a power that no man can take. 
name. No devil can get a hold of. Hell, it cannot stop. Upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God did not create Adam because he was lonely. He did not create Adam because he wanted children. He created Adam because he had a kingdom that he wanted to give. And there was nobody to give it to. So he created Adam. And he gave him a kingdom. He did not give him heaven. Because he did not create Adam to live in heaven. He created Adam to live in an extension of heaven called Eden. Eden, the Garden of Eden, was just a reflection of what heaven already was. There was no devil in heaven. And there was no demons in Eden. There was no sickness or disease or depression in heaven. There was no debt. There was no rebellion. And neither was there in Eden. God wanted man to enjoy the same joys of dominion that he himself was experiencing. You ever went to eat somewhere or you had a dessert and you took one bite and it's so good and you look at the person next to you and go, you got to taste this. <laughs> We've done the have we? Why? Because you want somebody else to experience what you just experienced. That's what church should be like. Most people on the job that see Christians, they don't want to be Christians because they've seen them. And they think, I'm already experiencing what you're experiencing. So the Lord created the Garden of Eden and man for Adam to rule and reign. If Adam had not eaten of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he would be alive right now. He would have lived forever. So when Adam fell, he did not lose heaven. I think Adam's in heaven right now. There's no place in the Bible that talks about that Adam's in hell. He just fell. But God's a merciful God. Adam's in heaven right now. So he didn't lose heaven. He lost a kingdom. He lost his dominion. So now the earth is in chaos. God is not happy. And for the next 4,000 years, man is trying to redeem himself by living out of willpower and laws and sacrifices. But he cannot get back dominion because there is sin in him. And so we come to the place, hallelujah, that one day, listen, the wise men didn't go looking for a baby. They went looking for a king. Hallelujah. They weren't looking for a little baby sucking a pacifier. They were looking for a king. And even when they saw him in an infant state, they recognized he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And they begin to give him gifts by the spirit of the Lord. God is trying to raise us up to be kingdom people. The greatest message. That Jesus preached, in fact, the only message that he ever preached, it was about the kingdom. So the greatest need of mankind today is not that we need a new government. We need kingdom government. Oh, 
See, government, I think we would all say this, <clears throat> has failed mankind with disease, poverty, depression, suicide, global food shortages, war, gender confusion. All of these come out of supposedly the greatest democracy that has ever existed. It's interesting that the highest murder sewer or murder rate <clears throat> in the United States occurs in the seat <clears throat> of our government, Washington, D.C. Government has no answer because anything that excludes God winds up in failure. And I, I, I concur with what my son talked about prophetically, that God was bringing them out, drawing them out, and their own words will be a noose. I can tell you this, that what we're getting ready to see, it's beginning to come in a little more focus. But what we're getting ready to see in this last day harvest is the kingdom of God is beginning to arise in the earth. You don't know it, but some of the greatest preachers in the world are not from the United States. States of America. They're in Indonesia. They're in China. They're in India. And they have a revelation. Some of the churches run three and four hundred thousand people. The dead are being raised. Limbs are growing back out. Dominion is being taken by the power of God. God is wanting to release that in this house. It's not about good preaching. It's about shaking the very foundations of hell and taking dominion over the power of darkness. Men, obviously, excluding God, thinks that the answer to all of our maladies and problems with humanity, the enemy always counterfeits what God does. God said this. He said, Jesus said, my kingdom is not in this world. It's not of this world. It is a spiritual kingdom. But it is a worldwide kingdom. It's in every nation on the earth right now. The kingdom of God is in every nation Almost every tongue, almost every dialect is offering praise unto God today because that the kingdom of God is there. But man's solution is they feel like there has to be a worldwide government. That's what you see the push towards. A digital currency, a worldwide currency, the, the, the abolishment of individual country governments where everything comes under one world government. And we see this with the Antichrist that's going to come. He will be a worldwide government. There will be no autonomy of any nations. They will all come under the authority of a one world government. Well, I got news for him. Somebody already beat you to that. And his name is Jesus Christ the righteous. He already has a worldwide government. You know what it's called? It's not called government. It's called the church of the firstborn. And the church, hallelujah, is the salt of the earth. And he rules and reigns by power and authority. <clears throat> so the most stable kingdom in and on the earth is the kingdom of God. You say, well, why? Because Isaiah 9, 7 tells us. That when this son is born, this everlasting father, that there will be government on his shoulders. And this is why I disagree with Trudeau or whatever his name is in Canada. Trudeau, well, you can throw out the first part of true because that <laughs> figures out truth and there ain't none of that there. <clears throat> That the days of abundance are over. I declare by the Spirit of the Lord, and so does the word of the Lord, that the increase 
of his government. There shall be no end. That doesn't mean that there is a recession in the church. There's a recession in the power of God. Not so. It's going to line upon line. Hallelujah. Precept upon precept. You think this is good. Wait till the Holy Ghost just amps it up a little bit on another Sunday, on another day, until somebody gets out of a wheelchair. Somebody starts hollering. I can see. So this is what I really want to begin to get in your spirit. The kingdom of God is a practical and living experience in the life of the believers. It works. Religion really only makes God a theory. You got the Baha'i religion that says every road leads to the same destination. That's like taking two people and putting them in a car, two cars, sticking them on Interstate 40 and say, you go west for 500 miles and you go south for 500 miles or east, and when y'all stop, you'll be in the same place. You got the Buddhists with great sayings that don't work. You got the Hindus with 600 million gods, and they're so confused, they don't even know who to pray to. You got the seven or the Scientologists, and they're pursuing science, which in itself declares the very existence of God. To the Muslims, he's God on Friday. To Seventh day Adventists, he's God on Saturday. To Christians, he's God on Sunday. But to the kingdom, he's God every single day. And every single moment, hallelujah. He's God on Thursday afternoon, and he's God on Saturday morning. He's God when you get in a car wreck, and the enemy tried to take you out, and you walk away, and they say you should be dead. He's God when they tell you your child won't live, and then he walks out of the hospital on Christmas Day. He's God when the enemy says it's over, and you're going down, and you walk out with victory in the power of God. He's God when the miracle marriage counselor says, uh, I don't think it'll work, uh, and you just celebrate your 40th year uh, anniversary. Uh, he's God in the midnight hour. Uh, he's God on the mountaintop. Uh, he's God in the valley. Hallelujah. He's God all over by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> so the kingdom of God for believers means that you and I are living under the laws of another government. And just so I don't get kicked off of YouTube, I'm not saying that we don't adhere to the laws of this nation. We are law-abiding. Paul teaches that. We walk according to the laws of this nation. We pay our taxes and we obey the laws. But we are talking about a spiritual principle I'm not talking about a natural government of the Constitution of the United States of America. I'm talking about the laws of a illegal spiritual government that says when you get sick, there's no answers. That when you get depressed, you have to stay on antidepressants for the rest of your life. That your kids aren't going to serve God. That tithing doesn't work. That your worst days are still ahead of you. We don't live under those laws. Hallelujah. We live under the laws of another government. We live under the laws of another government. What kind of laws do we live under? We live, hallelujah, under the law of this book that 
it is hard. It, it, listen, he said, heaven and earth can pass away before my words will pass away. If God said it, it works. It's a law of the kingdom, and it will work for you. It'll work in Haiti. It'll work in Sudan. It'll work in d Hallelujah. It'll work any country in the world. Why? Because the power of God, a law cannot be repealed because it is the word of the king. So Jesus said this in John 15, 19. You and I are not of this world. He said, I chose you out of the world. When you got saved, you were given a new citizenship. Philippians 3, 27 3 and 20 says this, for our citizenship is in heaven. My physical body lives in the earth, but my spirit man, hallelujah, resides in heaven. You say, well, I don't know about that. Ephesians says this, that you and I, if Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father and has said you and I have been made to sit with Christ, where? In heavenly places. So though our physical body is in this earth under gravity, our spirit man lives under the laws of another government. That whatever God has declared in the name of the Lord has to work for you by the Spirit of God. Hear me. It does not matter what the enemy is saying to you. It does not matter if nobody's ever been delivered from it. Hallelujah. Abraham had never seen a 90-year-old woman give birth to a baby. But the law of another government said she's going to have a baby when she's 90 years old. Peter had never seen anybody walk on water. But the laws of another government said get out of the boat and walk on water. Hallelujah. The disciples had never seen two loaves and five fishes feed 20,000 people. But the laws of another government said, if you put some anointing on it, if you put a little bit of the salt of the earth on it, something's going to happen. And 20,000 people are going to be fed. Religion doesn't have any answers. Religion will give you a good funeral. The laws of the kingdom will give you a great resurrection. So I'm leading up to something here because something that I really feel like the Lord has put in my spirit. But the primary reason for Jesus being sent to the earth was not to die on the cross. I'm not minimizing what he did at Calvary. But that's not why he came. He came to restore a kingdom that the Father had given to the first Adam that had been taken away. And man has not had a kingdom of heaven in the earth for 4,000 years. So Jesus, hallelujah, comes back to restore a kingdom to mankind. There's a difference between prosperity and faith. We, for years in the church in America, became drunk on pursuing prosperity while our preachers were falling to adultery and affairs and pornography was rampant in our churches. Our children are getting pregnant out of wedlock. Depression is everywhere. We lost our anointing in our services, but we have the most expensive buildings that we've ever had. We had the mayor coming, and we had planes, and we had all kinds of money in the bank, but we did not have the kingdom of God. We were living as a servant to the enemy, and God is trying to tell us that the kingdom of God is different than what we have believed. Amen. 
This is why Jesus came, Luke 4, 43. He said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns. And I love this. He said, because that is why I'm sent. Until the church gets a revelation <clears throat> of what the kingdom of God is. We will only talk about what we're going to do, but never in actuality see it. You can never use something that you don't have. You can never believe for something that does not exist. You will never walk in a dimension that you do not believe that you can walk in. <clears throat> And that's why the kingdom of God has no limitations. Luke 12, 32 and 33 says this, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased, not going to be, has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Religious people are afraid. Kingdom people are bold. <clears throat> Say, how do I find know if I'm in the kingdom, if it's in me? Watch what you do the next time something unexpected happens that's out of your ability to fix. How will you react? What will come out of your mouth? What will you do? Will you start crying <clears throat> saying, I'm so afraid, I didn't, I don't know what to do. It's not, it's, I, I have no answers. Or will you declare the laws of God say that this is a lie and I will not allow myself to be brought under it by the Holy Ghost power. I'm going to tell you by the Spirit of the Lord, everything that contradicts the Word is a lie. I don't care how real it is. I don't care who said it. I don't care what kind of dollar signs behind it. If it violates the word of the Lord, it is a lie. And God said, my God cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. Why are we getting healed? Because we don't really believe the kingdom of God. We want God to still do it. And God said, I already did it. I already read up the heaven. I'm sitting on the right hand of the Father. You're sitting next to me. You go ahead and do it. Why? Because the kingdom of God is within you. So I want to take you just on a little journey to Matthew chapter 19. We're going to read a few verses because there are so many places that the Lord would, Jesus, when he was, all he ever talked about was the kingdom of God. He would say the kingdom of God is like, or the kingdom of heaven is like. Remember last week I told you that the kingdom of heaven is a real place. And the kingdom of God is the influence of the kingdom of heaven in the earth. That's what the kingdom of God is. It is bringing heaven into the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 11 talks about the days of heaven on the earth. So many, so little of God's people actually live in consistent victory. Or we've learned how to make peace <clears throat> with things that are in our lives that we should not have to deal with. Make sure that I have this. All right. This is in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came, uh, and this is a rich young ruler. It's in some of the other gospels. A, young, a rich young ruler came unto Jesus, and he said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? I personally think that this was a loaded question. I think that he already thought, I am one accomplished believer. I've got all my ducks in a row. I'm fixing to impress this guy. 
So I'm going to ask him, what do I need to do to enter into the kingdom of heaven or the eternal life? Jesus said, why are you calling me good? There's none good but one. <clears throat> that is God. He said, but if you want to enter into life, you got to keep the commandments. So the rich young ruler said, well, what one do I, what, which one? He said, well, you should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the rich young ruler is going, Phew, got that. And he said, well, then I'm good. Because all these things have I kept from my youth up. He said, anything else I like? Do I like anything? And the Lord said, if you want to be perfect, which means mature, he said, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. <clears throat> but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Why would Jesus <clears throat> ask this young man who obviously was very pious, lived up in piety in his life, he wasn't living in open sin. Why would Jesus tell him after this wonderful display of righteousness, <clears throat> you're still lacking something. You need to sell what you have and give it away. Have treasure in heaven. Why did he, ask, why did he tell him that? Because <clears throat> the rich young man was trusting in his wealth and not in the kingdom. And the Lord said, and I'm going to bring this out here in the next verse, but he was telling him, if you really want to get in the kingdom, you got to stop looking at money as your source and start looking at God in the kingdom of heaven as your source. And a rich young ruler couldn't do it <clears throat> because he was convinced if I become broke, then my quality of life will change. Listen, if Jesus is standing in front of me and telling me this is what you need to do, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to take him at his word for it because when Jesus challenges you to do something and you do it, your life goes up to another level instead of going back down. But he did not have the revelation of the kingdom of God. And so, verse 23 Jesus said to his disciples, Verily I say unto you that it's difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He wasn't saying it's difficult for a rich man to go to heaven. He was saying it's difficult for a rich man to get a kingdom mentality because he trusts in the wrong thing. Luke 12 and 15 says, A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things that he possesses. And yet we use it as a measuring stick today in society as we are successful in correlation to how much we're worth or what we have. But probably in reality, some of the richest people in the world in the eyes of God are those who don't possess that much in the natural, but they are sold out to the kingdom of the Lord, and their trust is in God. You know why George Mueller could raise up like what he did in his lifetime? They called him a man of faith. is because he had a revelation of kingdom mentality. You know why A. Allen and Catherine Kuhlman could bring 
bring him in by the thousands and ambulances lined up at the door and they brought him in on stretchers and they walked off on their own two feet. It's because they had kingdom mentality. Our problem is uh, we are still looking to God to do it uh, when he said, uh, I've gone. Uh, the kingdom of God is in you. Uh, you have the power. You have the authority. You have the ability. The same anointing uh, that was on Jesus at baptism is the same anointing uh, that's inside of your belly, uh, that's inside of your spirit. Uh, that's why Jesus said, greater is he that is in you uh, than he that is in the world. So how do we get into the kingdom of God? In just a few chapters back in Matthew 13. Matthew 13. And uh, let's look at verse 45. <clears throat> Or let's look at verse 44 first. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure that's been hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and sell all that he hath so he can buy the field. And then he says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Notice both of these men are looking for something. They are searching for something. He who hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. You must pray every day, God, help me to stay hungry for the presence of the Lord. This is why most people don't have a prayer life. It's because God is a stranger, and the only time they can pray is when it's crisis-driven. Crisis prayers are not relationship. They are spoken out of doubt and unbelief. Hallelujah. When you walk in kingdom authority and kingdom power, when something does happen that you don't like, you have the authority by the power of God to rebuke that thing and command it to back up in the power of the Lord. So he said this. He said, both of these men are looking for something. And he said, when they found it, the pearl of great price, he said he went and sold all that he had and he bought it. <clears throat> both of these guys, the scripture is telling this story for a reason. He said, both of them, when they found the treasure, you say, well, what's the treasure? It's Jesus. We have this treasure where? In earthen vessels. When they found the treasure, they realized that what I have in the natural doesn't compare to what I just found. So they said, I will sell everything that I got so I can buy this. Say, well, pastor, you know, it's not like you're just telling us to sell everything we got, our houses, our cars, everything we got, and just, you know, pursue God. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm going to show it to you here in the Scripture. <clears throat> I think we'll read it out of Luke. Uh, I like it in Matthew 2, but in Luke chapter 12. In verse, let's just start um, with verse 22. He said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. Life is more than meat, the body is more than raiment. Then he said, you need to consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They neither have storehouses nor barn. And God feedeth them. Sound like to me they found the pearl at great price. 
How much more are ye better than the birds? We'll skip 25 because I'm short and I already tried that one. And evidently, I've not walked into the keys of the kingdom yet. <clears throat> Verse 29, Seek not ye what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, neither be you of a doubtful mind. For all of these things do the nations of the world seek after. The unbeliever, those that don't understand kingdom mentality, they use all of their energies. Pastor, I'm sorry I've been missing so much church. and They actually hadn't been to church in six weeks because they're so busy on their job. Kingdom mentality says this. If your job is costing you your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to tell the Lord, I'm giving up my job because I believe you'll give me a better one that will give me time to pursue my relationship with the Lord. So the Lord is saying this. He said, don't you know that your father, in fact, let's just read it. Verse 31, and in Matthew, it says, but seek ye first. Here it just, just says seek, but verse 31, but rather seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what happens? All of these things, what things? Houses, vehicles, retirement, all of these things that you are worried over, your business, your children, college for your kids, health insurance, all of these things. He said, you got it backwards. He said, the believers are seeking first how to meet their own needs. And then if they got time, they will seek the kingdom. He said, don't you understand that everything that you need is in the kingdom? That when you seek first the kingdom of God, then God adds everything to you. That when it's prayer meeting, you're there. When it's fasting, you're doing it. When there's an extended meeting, you're in the house. Why? Because you are seeking first the kingdom of God. That your prayer time's not when you're exhausted nine o'clock at night, but it's at six in the morning before you go to work. And it's, Lord, this is me. I just want to tell you, I'm thankful that the kingdom of God is in me. I thank you, Lord, that all day long, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You're going to head off sickness. You're going to head off disease. You're going to protect my marriage. My children are going to flourish. <laughs> Seek first the kingdom of God. You don't have to pursue prosperity. Pursue the kingdom. So now, I wanna, I'm just about at the end. Everything that you and I need is in the kingdom. It's already there. God, I, I, Harry, I believe this all in my heart. What the enemies tried to steal... God says it's still there. Source is going to change. Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think one of the reasons God gave me this revelation is because we're dealing with this new building. And I've been, by the time we get done, we paid $8.2 million for the building. We borrowed $12 million. We have a private loan of two million. We still have some things that we need to finish out. We've put several million into it. And we're going to be in that 
Hear me by the Spirit. We are going to be in that building. <clears throat> But to me, that's not the issue. I believe God said we're going into it debt-free. So, <clears throat> I've reminded the Lord of what he has prophesied. So, we're just a few, few short months away from possessing our inheritance. And so, a few of us that are managing this project, that are understanding the complexities of the finance and all of that, it has robbed us of sleep. We have tried to come up with creative ways. Then I was praying the other day, and I said, Lord, I need $20 million to pay off this building. We need this studio up and running to be able to broadcast to the nations. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, why are you asking me for something that I already did? All of us in this building have needs. Asking God for something is unbelief. You say, well, what about the scripture that says, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knock it shall be open unto you. That's talking about the kingdom. It wasn't talking about our world. <clears throat> Everything that you and I need is already in the kingdom. The $20 million, which would just be a drop in the bucket to compare to what we will spend till Jesus comes back. There will come the day, I was praying this morning, the Lord said, the day's gonna come, your church would be like a bank, that you will give money to other churches to build their buildings by the power of God, hallelujah. <clears throat> But the kingdom of God operates by heavenly principles. And we start thinking in terms like the rich young ruler. God, uh, this is the way I can do it. I'm leaning on this. Uh, and I can't, I can't give that up because if I do, I'm going to crash and burn. And God's saying, don't you understand? If you would go into the position of rest and instead of coming to me and saying, oh, will you do this? Come into my presence, what? With thanksgiving. God, I want to thank you that we've walked into our celebration service uh, and we're holding up paid in full uh, oh hallelujah God I want to thank you that when the enemy tried to take my retirement uh, look what God did uh, joy unspeakable uh, pressed down shaken together heaped up running over uh, that God made there be a kingdom mentality uh, that gets loose in this building uh, that you get a revelation uh, that God I've already done it uh, I believe it's already done now, I want to praise you. I want to thank you that Lord is there. <laughs> Hallelujah. It works. We lived in a house for 28 years that when we saw it, listen, me and my wife lived in this dump. Finally, I told her, I said, we're moving after we found our second snake in the house, a copperhead. And we were on the road traveling all the time. You get home at 2 in the morning, and I was, I'm thinking when I shim, put my feet down in the covers, what am I going to hit? Is there going to be something laying on the floor? And I couldn't rest. And so we finally, we finally sold the house. We're living in an apartment. We have no money for a down payment. We've been given 50% for a year and a half. So our house was in arrears. Our credit wasn't good. Our electricity had been shut off. Our phone had been shut off twice. And we're looking at these real estate books. And she had a different style of house she wanted than what I wanted. And... Uh, She'd show me one. I said, I don't like that. And finally, she said, well, I ain't living there. And uh, one day, I, I brought a book over to her. I said, I want you to look at this house. And I showed it to her. She said, oh, my. She said, well, look at this book. It was the exact same house. We went over there. Nobody living there. It was empty. Had a swimming pool in the back. It was $175,000 at that time. Might have been $2 million for us. You know what we did? We used kingdom mentality. 
we said, we got so much money in God's bank from what we've been given. And in the rain, we laid hands on that house. Hallelujah. And we said in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We claim this house. I lived there 28 years. When we went to, to the bank for the loan, I told my wife, I said, I don't, I don't know if we're going to get this loan because I know our credit's bad. And the guy pulled up our credit. He said, well, that's good. He said, you got A1 credit. I tell you what, he, he looked at the wrong kingdom. He was looking at God's computer, and I had good credit in heaven, hallelujah, in the kingdom of heaven. I want to tell you, the enemy's got you looking at the wrong set of books, got you listening to the wrong story, got you listening to the wrong person, what you got to get a revelation of. I'm a kingdom person. I've got the kingdom of God in me, and wherever I go, God goes. Whatever I speak, God speaks that God is going to come through. Stand with me. Well, I was able to stay off for next week because I'm going to preach on this again next week, and I got some really good stuff. It's been a long time since I'm not a series preacher. Uh, I didn't say serious. I said series. <clears throat> But the Lord is bringing this church somewhere. My prayer partners would come. I know this is Easter Sunday. And we might have some visitors here. That have really not committed their lives to Christ. And we're going to give you the opportunity there in a minute. If you're here in the house. I want to speak to everyone who feel like you might be in crisis. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because it can be a private thing. But I sense in my spirit there are some of you in this building today that you say, Pastor, I am in crisis. I need God to do something. I'm not going to ask God to do it. I'm going to ask God to open your understanding that you speak the word. Instead of going to God, weeping and crying and saying, oh God, if you don't do this, I'm going to perish. <clears throat> the disciples, when they were in the boat and the storm is beginning to come into the boat, and Jesus is asleep, and they woke him up and said, we're going to perish if you don't do something. I truly believe they could have left Jesus asleep, and one of them could have stood up and said, peace, be still. Why? Because God had delegated them, Jesus had delegated to them his authority. They were already healing the sick and doing amazing miracles. But they got in crisis mentality and reverted back. I can't help myself. I need Jesus to do it for me. We need to praise God that he has already fixed this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want a prayer partner today, if you want to come share something with a prayer partner, please come quickly. We're going to change the order of our service here in a moment. And you just want somebody to, to, to agree with you in prayer. I want to give you this verse because this has really been in my spirit. Whatsoever you desire, that it also could encompass whatsoever you need. Believing when you pray. Most people pray and they don't believe. And it's like a child, God's going, I can't hear you. I can't hear you because God can't hear unbelief. Whatsoever you desire, 
believing when you pray that what? That you have received, not going to, that you have received those things, ye shall have them. God, I thank you for paying off our new building. We are a kingdom church. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that miracles are swirling in the atmosphere. And that, Lord, our faith, our kingdom revelation, that it's already in the kingdom. That, Lord, we're not coming to you with our needs. We're coming to you with kingdom revelation. God, we praise you. That's already taken care of. Now, Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want to say? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to let my wife lead us in the invitation for committing our life to Christ. She has an evangelist heart. God is so good. What a rich, rich word today. Thank you, Lord. With every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around, just for a moment. Uh, I want to. I just. I just want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I just sense today that there are those here that maybe you just came with family members. You say, you know, I just want to go to be in church with my family. But I know that I'm not living where I should live with Jesus Christ. I know that I am not walking in the kingdom of God. I just want to give you an opportunity today. But first, I just want to tell you, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he stretched out his arms and he died. If you're here today and you say, I just want to surrender my life completely to Jesus Christ, you just slip your hand up and slip it back down and say, Pastor Candy, that's me. That's me. I'm not going to make you come down front. I just want to pray for you right where you are. Would you just slip your hand up, slip it back down? I want to know Jesus. Yes, I see hands going up. Is there anybody else? Jesus loves you. What a glorious day it is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I've asked the Isaacs, I've asked Higher Ground and the Voices of Lee to come, and we're going to sing a song together uh, as a church family. Why don't we just come down front? Can we do that? Pastor Kent always has us come down front. and Can we do that and just worship together on this Resurrection Sunday? Just come together as the family of God. We're going to sing together. On a hill. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I church for our cherish for
pray together. I want us, everybody, if you will, just to bow your heads. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And we're going to sing it one more time. But I, I promised you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want everybody to pray this prayer. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. But I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on a cross and he rose again that I could have eternal life. So Lord, would you come into my heart? Would you wash me in the blood of Jesus? Cleanse me of all of my sin. Make me a new creation in Christ. I surrender my life to you. Amen. Because he Amen.